<laughs> my phone won't stop ringing and I'm just like, ah, come on. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. Britney Slays is one of the best singers in metal today. Fully agree. So I made a very special video of the top 10 Britney Slays moments. And uh, why are we doing that particularly today? Well, today is Britney's birthday. Happy birthday, Brittany! We love you! Bye. So where do we start? Well, obviously with the scream heard all over the world. Or at the very least, all over the desert. Tonight We Ride was really the song that introduced so many people to Britney's power. And there's a particular scream that I'm talking about. You know the one. No, not that one. Also, not that one. Still not the one. That's the one. This really was the start for a lot of fans, so just expect every new song to kick it off with a Britney scream. I won't give it this You know, Britney is a gifted writer and a builder of worlds. And that came out really great with the albums Apex and Abyss. In Apex, we get to discover the dark world of the matriarch and the immortal. And then like a good cheesy 80s uh, horror or action movie in the sequel, they went to space. But for those of you who have read attentively the liner notes in the Abyss album, uh, you already know that this is not the last time we've visited that universe. The band is working on their new album, so we'll see what happens. Oh, okay. Lots of really cool things happening in here. Reactions to the Awakening video, well, that one with the charismatic voice, aka opera singer Elizabeth Azaroff, was far from the only one. Basically, these days when somebody wants to start a reaction channel, uh, their watchers very quickly urge them to watch one of Britney's songs with Unleash the Archers. Uh, this is something that Britney herself has uh, definitely noticed. I mean, we love the reaction community. It's it's an awesome place and it's great people. And it's a lot of fun being a part of it and getting to be, you know, one of the first things that as soon as a reactor comes out and um, starts a channel, being one of the first recos to them every single time, it seems. It's like, all right, you guys, they've only been doing videos for three months, but you've been asking for a wing since day one so here we go finally you know <laughs> and i feel bad because it's kind of like oh no are we like bullying people into listening to us <laughs> like i don't know but um it's no it's great it's it's uh, honestly it's an honor to be a part of the community and to be so you know yeah supported there uh, well i'm extremely proud to be canadian and, but it's not because of any one thing. It's, it's mostly because, I mean, number one, our country is absolutely beautiful and huge and I love it. And it doesn't matter where I go, there's always something gorgeous about it. You know, Canada is a complex country um, with some darker pages in its history. But if you look at what Canada stands for and what Canada does today, um, and for me as a, as a first generation immigrant living here, um, it is truly unique to see a country that is so inclusive and, and so open. And when you get to know Brittany, you very quickly uh, understand that she embodies those values. 
I'd, I'm like, welcome new Canadians and let's bring more diversity and more culture. Let's open up cooler food shops. You know, I want to try everything. Um, we just are, we're moving at the end of the, of the month and we were kind of checking out the new neighborhood and there is a Palestinian restaurant. I'm like so excited to try Palestinian food. And I just, I just love that about Canada, that we are a mosaic of different peoples and cultures and religions. And uh, I think that that's just the greatest. And I want it to keep happening and I don't want us to close our borders and say, we're full, you know, because we're not. <laughs> our country is huge. We have a tiny population. Come to Canada. It's it's mine and it's yours. It doesn't belong to anyone. So that's one thing that I just hope that we stay that way forever. <laughs> this Canadian spirit of Britney and the band uh, obviously climax when they covered the Stan Rogers classic Northwest Passage. For those of you that are not Canadian, uh, Stan Rogers is a big deal. Uh, you know, a very, very famous folk musician uh, from a few decades ago. And Northwest Passage is just one of those songs that are ingrained in the DNA of Canada. If you want to learn more reasons why Britney loves Canada so much, you should check out my uh, Canada Day video of last year. You know, maybe the most fun was when Britney started listing songs and artists that should be on a Canada Day playlist. Something from Stompin' Tom Connors. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which, I mean, <laughs> we, we all uh, love the um, Gumboot Cloggeroo. That one's pretty fun. <laughs> it's a party song. <laughs> um, Gotta have some Celine. The the Jim Steinman stuff though, because that's that's the epic stuff, not the not our pop stuff. If you don't have it, just I know that it's it, it's out there and we've already done this, but Heartless World by Tease has to be on there. One of those bands that Britney really loves is the band Tease, a bit of a forgotten rock band from the late 70s. Unleash the Archers covered their song Heartless World and it was kind of their way of trying to put them back in the spotlight. But something that Britney also does is lend her voice uh, to other bands and projects um, that she collaborates with. The list is long, but some examples include Timo Tolki's Avalon, the symphonic death metal band Exdeo, although obviously if your manager asks you to sing on a song of his band, then I guess you kind of have to do that. I'm kidding, uh, Exdeo is phenomenal. And let's not forget the hilarious opera battle that she did with the guys from Lords of the Trident. Now talking about singing songs of some of our heroes, Britney uh, famously sang some karaoke in Edinburgh um, during a tour where she just got up uh, in front of a machine and started singing Queen of the Reich, one of the very early Queen's Reich songs. Somebody recorded her with their phone and the video went pretty viral. And one of the people that got to see that video was actually the prog metal mastermind, Arjen Lukasen, the creator of, you know, phenomenal projects like Arjen and Star One. Queen of the Reich was playing, so I was like, okay, what's gonna happen now? And she sang <laughs> Queen of the Reich, man, better than Jeff Tate ever did, you know? And I was like, there with goosebumps. Cause it's real, you know, it's a karaoke bar, it's a fan, or, or a guy, someone in the venue yeah. filming it. There's no auto tune, there's no studio tricks. It's just her standing there, a queen of the rock, you know? Whoa! Yeah. Arjun actually told me how impressed he was with Britney singing in that video that it prompted him to invite her to sing on his new Star One album for the song Fate of Man. Fight, 
fun fact, Fate of Man is actually about the movie The Terminator, and this is also one of Britney's uh, favorite franchises. So she definitely took the opportunity briefly in that video to kind of channel her own impersonation of The Terminator. Now, playing the Terminator was not the only time that Britney allowed her inner geek to come out. Far from it. I'll show you snaps and earth betrays the start, the prison fails. Many fans know her passion for the fantasy movie Willow, which is her favorite movie. And the band also invited fans to play Dungeons and Dragons with them on several occasions. <laughs> and then finally, have you seen the Planeswalker video? People can be free. That was probably the biggest hurdle, really, was just overcoming that sort of uh, first impression, I guess you could call it, that, that everyone thinks when they first see a female in the promo photo. One of the stigmas that a lot of female singers in metal are faced with is that many people will very quickly accuse them of, you're not metal. One thing that you could never accuse Britney of is for not being a genuine metalhead. It's a genuine, that's the word. So I'd work my ass off to, to prove to them that we weren't just going to be... And like I said, there's nothing wrong with symphonic metal or this aesthetic at all, but we weren't just going to be another pretty girl in a corset singing opera. One thing that she shares with another icon of her, Bruce Dickinson, uh, is that in a show, you always look the audience in the eye. Oh yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I do. I do that every time. I'm like, I want to, I want to look, I look at you. Like I'm, this show is for you and I'm going to look you in the eyes. And that's one, one of the best things is like when someone, <laughs> someone isn't really expecting you or they don't know your band very well. And they're like, kind of like watching. And then I'll like look at them and they'll be like, you know, <laughs> it's just like, no, no, no. I was like, look at me. Like, you know, it's really funny. Or if people are just kind of standing there like this. You know, I'll like, I'll drill into them until they're, they're like, okay, like she sees me standing here like this. I guess I better do something, you know, <laughs> like that's the best moment. But it's like, you're not just a face in the crowd, bud. I see you. <laughs> So I had to sneak in one personal moment in this list, which was um, a bit of an impromptu short road trip through Belgium uh, that I got to do with uh, Brittany and Scott uh, after the Alcatraz festival last summer. Uh, the band was hanging out in Belgium and on their uh, last day, I went to uh, meet with them, you know, brought them some treats, uh, some local pastries, uh, but qu quite quickly um, it was clear that there was a bit of an issue that the stage gear uh, did not have a proper bag anymore. It was a bit of a rude awakening for North Americans to find out that every store in Belgium is closed on a Sunday. Uh, we finally figured out that the only store that was open on a Sunday uh, was an army surplus store that was about an hour's drive away. So uh, we all jumped in a very small car. Uh, drove to that place, you know, allowed Scott and Brittany to see some of the Belgian countryside. When we got to the store, at first it seemed that only army coffins would have been big enough uh, to hold all the material, but um, after some searching, we found the one bag uh, that could, uh, you know, safely contain all the material. A little bit of stress for the band, I'm sure, uh, but uh, it all worked out. Later that night, I took Grant and Nick uh, through a different kind of sightseeing tour, uh, basically through all the beers in Belgium, uh, but that's a different story, um, maybe for another time. All right, before we get to the number one moment of Britney, uh, let's talk about a few honorable mentions. The first one has to be another collaboration where Britney joined the dead crew of Oddwood, which is like a folk pirate band. Um, and she sang on Siren Song. Maybe not the song itself, but at the end of the song, there is a very, very audible burp. Uh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's Britney. Like, no, no, no. Like, yeah. um, no. On a more serious note, Britney stands up for what she believes in. Uh, obviously, the band uh, supported Black Lives Matter, and to raise awareness, they recorded a cover version of the song Zombie. Head, 
On a less serious note, um, I just love how Britney and everybody else in Unleash the Archers, you know, never take themselves too serious in some of their videos. And then obviously the very first song that we've ever heard Britney sing on, The Black Goat of the Woods. So, what is the number one moment of Britney Slays? Let's find out. Respect your fans, because without them, you are nothing. And that's literally the truth. Without them, you are nowhere. No one is listening to you. No one is buying your stuff. No one is going to your shows. They are the reason why you exist. This is more than a moment. Britney's passion, dedication, respect for her fans uh, is really extraordinary. A really cool example of how Britney and the band invite people in uh, is opening the door to the backstage virtually of the Junos last year. Junos being the Canadian Grammys and uh, you know Unleash the Archer won that uh, for the Abyss album uh, and uh, you know through Twitch uh, they basically you know let the fans in which was really cool. But hey if you're still in doubt um, check out this last clip of an interview that I did with Britney um, over a year ago now where Britney gives some advice to new musicians support them just as much as they support you because as much as big business or mainstream media or even the labels want to just talk about the numbers they're not numbers they're people and they love your music and they buy it and you know they keep you going so make sure that you always just love them <laughs> that's all <laughs> all right those were my 10 uh, favorite moments of Britney Slays. What did I miss? What were you expecting? Um, if you have any other really cool moments that you want to share, you know, why don't you just put them in the comments? And don't forget, it's her birthday. So let's fill the comments with happy birthday wishes. Anyways, this was a lot of fun for me. Stay tuned for more content with Unleash the Archers coming soon. Stay metal. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.